Hello friends, this video on NEAT Human Health and Diseases is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. Question number 9. Ringworm in humans is caused by bacteria, fungi, nematodes or viruses. So ringworm is caused by fungi and how does uh, fungi enter our body normally the fungi causing ringworm enters the body through contaminated soil or uh, contaminated objects now such fungi cause skin problems and uh, these type of fungi are known as dermatophytes that is fungi causing skin problems some of the examples of dermatophytes are trichophyton Microsporum, Epidermophyton, so these are some examples of dermatophytes. Question number 10, select the correct statement from the ones below, barbiturates when given to criminals make them tell the truth, so is that the right statement? Well, not really, because uh, if, if you can quickly recall, what are barbiturates? So, barbiturates are the sleeping pills. They induce sleep. So, this is not the correct statement. Option B, mor morphine is often given to persons who have undergone surgery as a painkiller. Well, this is a correct statement. That's because morphines are analgesics. That is, they are painkillers. And morphine is a quite effective analgesic. So it treats or relieves severe, severe pain. So this falls under the category of opioid uh, narcotic analgesics and it works on the central nervous system and change the way our body feels and responds to pain. So this is a correct statement. How about um, the third one? Chewing tobacco lowers blood pressure and heart rate. In fact, it is just the opposite. Chewing tobacco uh, increases the blood pressure. Cocaine is given to patients after surgery as it stimulates recovery. Absolutely not because cocaine is a very strong CNS stimulant. So it causes energy, it increases the energy, it increases the talkativeness, it increases hallucination effects. So you know, all these effects are definitely not desired in a patient after surgery. So option B is the right one. Now since we were talking about, uh, the, if you look at the first option, it says, uh, drugs which make the criminals tell the truth so some truth serum drugs are ethanol uh, scopol amine uh, amobarbital so these are some examples of truth serum drugs question number 11 a person likely to develop tetanus is immunized by administering dead germs preformed antibodies white spectrum antibodies or weakened germs now what happens is uh, a person who is likely to develop tetanus at the time of need passive immunity helps right so a passive immunity is that type of immunity where antibodies are injected into the body and these antibodies are produced in some other organisms in response to this given antigen so for the same antigen antibodies are produced in some organism and then that antibody is injected into the body of this person who is likely to develop tetanus now a person likely to develop tetanus will have enough of the bacterium clostridium tetani because this is the bacterium which causes tetanus clostridium tetani now when sufficient amount of antibodies are injected into the body of this person they enhance the passive immunity and that's how uh, it can be immunized so therefore the correct answer would be preformed antibodies question number 12 the letter t in t lymphocytes refer to so T in T lymphocytes stands for the thymus gland because thymus gland is the site where these cells mature. Question number 13. Which one of the following is a pair of viral diseases? Ringworm AIDS. So ringworm is caused by a fungi. So this is A is not the right option. Common cold AIDS. Now, common cold and AIDS look to be the correct option because both of them are viral diseases. Dysentery, 
is caused by bacteria common cold by virus so since dysentery is caused by bacteria this is not the right option typhoid tuberculosis so typhoid and tuberculosis both of them are bacterial diseases so d is also again not the correct option so if you look at option b here aids is caused by the hiv virus the retrovirus and common cold is also caused by a virus called rhinovirus so they are both viral diseases Question number 14. To which type of barriers under innate immunity do the saliva in the mouth and the tears from the eyes belong? Cytokine barrier, cellular barrier, physiological barrier or physical barrier? Now, there are many different types of barriers that we discuss under innate immunity. For example, we discuss about physical barrier. We discuss about cellular barrier. We talk about cytokine barrier and we talk about physiological barrier. So let us see what are the uh, examples of each of these barriers. So under physical barrier comes uh, skin, urogenital tract, respiratory tract. So all of these come under physical barrier. So obviously it, here physical barrier is not the right option. Cellular barrier, under this comes different types of cells like monocytes, lymphocytes, uh, leukocytes. So, they would come under cellular barrier. So, here that would also not be the right option. Third is cytokine barrier. Here, uh, the interferons which prevents viral infection in non-infected cells. So, all those interferons are part of cytokine barrier. So, in this case, that is also not the right option. What about physiological barrier? So, under physiological barrier comes uh, various uh, body secretions, like secretions from different glands like saliva, tears. So, all of these come under physiological barrier. Not only that, the uh, body temperature, pH of the body fluid, so all of these comes under the category of physiological barrier. So in this case, physiological barrier is the right option. Question number 15. Increased asthmatic attack in certain seasons are related to hot and humid environment, eating fruits preserved in tin containers, inhalation of seasonal pollen or low temperature. So, in this case, the correct option would be inhalation of seasonal pollen. Why? Because asthma is a respiratory disorder. So, so respiratory disorder means it has to be something which is related to the respiratory system or respiration. So, during respiration, we breathe in. Inhalation is a part of the process of respiration. So, during inhalation, if we also inhale the pollen, what happens? This, this has a possibility to impact the respiratory tract and asthma attacks can happen. Question number 16. If you suspect major deficiency of antibodies in a person, to which of the following would you look for confirmatory evidence? Serum albumins, serum globulins, fibrinogen in plasma, hemocytes. Now what are antibodies? So antibodies are immunoglobulins. So we often write them as IgS that is immunoglobulins. So these are antibodies which are produced in response to antigens because antibodies are always produced in response to antigens. Now all antibodies are immunoglobulins. However, all immunoglobulins are not antibodies. Now this is an important thing to un understand that all antibodies are immunoglobulins but all immunoglobulins are not antibodies. So, in this case, it says that a person has major deficiency of antibodies. To which of the following would you look for confirmatory evidence? So, obviously for serum globulins. So, we will look for this one. Question number 17. Sickle cell anemia has not been eliminated from the African population because it is controlled by recessive genes. 
it is not a fatal disease it provides immunity against malaria it is controlled by dominant genes so here the correct option would be c that is it pre prevents it provides immunity against malaria now if you look at the a way sickle cell disease happen in a person we see that the carriers of this disease are less susceptible to falciparum malaria so what is sickle cell anemia what happens in this disease so in this disease the red blood cells become sickle shaped normally they are round in shape but here they become sickle shaped like as you see here so these are the sickle shaped rbcs and since they become sickle shaped therefore they cannot flow freely throughout the body and that that condition is sickle cell anemia now if you look at the inheritance pattern of sickle cell anemia because this is a genetic disorder we see that only that person is affected by this disease in which the gene is present in the homozygous condition that means only if the person has defective gene or carrier gene like both the genes are carrier only then that person will be uh, suffering from sickle cell anemia but all those who are just carriers of sickle cell anemia like this capital r small r is a carrier but is not uh, an affected individual so even though these people they carry a sickle cell anemia gene but they are not suffering from the disease so all these carriers of the disease are always less susceptible to falciparum malaria so basically the presence of this sickle cell anemia gene helps them to protect from malaria therefore sickle cell allele is maintained at high levels in the population where falciparum malaria is common so no because it is benefiting the population in some way and that is why sickle cell anemia has not been eliminated from the african population thank you please visit examfear.com for free quality education you can learn with a simple four step learning process wherein you can watch video lessons you can ask your questions you can refer notes and you can take a free online test we have content for class 6 to 12 on physics chemistry mathematics and biology along with practical videos so please subscribe to our channel for daily updates thank you